Friends, how's everyone doing? Hope everyone's doing good. Good example today. So I just got off the phone with my uh, my leadman, and uh, I, I want to express a situation. I wanted to do this while it was fresh. So right now it's Friday. It's right now it's about six fifty eight p.m. in the night. My lead guy he just got home. My lead guy is doing a wonderful, wonderful job. Does a great job. Really appreciate him. Does a great job. And uh, he was. We were talking about. So he's working for. <clears throat> let me step back. So this is what originally happened. We went to a customer, a residential customer, a resi, a resi. And we ended up. Um, we got there, and they have an easy set torque system. Do you know what the easy set torque system is? Let me explain. The easy set torque system is basically a system that is designed from Menards to keep you married in to Menards. But then if you don't know what Menards is, you might have a Menards. It's basically like a Lowe's or Home Depot around this area. And so what Menards will do is they sell you this product that gets you locked in to their, their product, right? It's basically made by Clope. And it's made so the homeowner can put a screw or whatever, a screw gun on it, and tighten up the garage door springs, the torsion springs above the door that help lift the door up and down. And so what they'll do is they'll put a coupler in between, right? So normally a garage door, our garage doors have a solid shaft. The coupler is prone to fail. There's other things that are prone to fail too because they're plastic gears on the end, and I've also had the bearings fall out. I want to tell you this interesting story. So what happened was years ago for myself, right? That was the burn mark. That was the time where I said, no more, no more. I ended up going to a customer out in it's the GR area is what we call it. And it's about roughly about 45 to an hour away, right? So I get out there. I see they got the easy set torque system and the bearing fell out and which caused when the bearing fell out it caused the drum to drop which lost the cable so you know it's one of those things when i look back I, I i did it for the customer in a sense because it was almost like it's almost like i don't know i didn't know my worth in the in the world so I'm trying to save the customer money, but I'm not thinking about the fact of everybody else, right? And myself included. I'm not thinking about how we have to make money. How this, when I do this service, they are not going to be satisfied and it's going to cause a problem. So anyways, I, I, I put the bearing back in. I tighten everything up. I've worked on these things a couple, a good handful of times, let's just say. So I know you got to smash the bearings, or not the bearings, the drums together on both sides. They got to smush basically everything so the, the bearing doesn't fall out. And then you got to tighten it down with a um, set screw. So I do all that, right? And I kid you not, it was like the next day later. I fix it. I think I charged them a service call. And I remember I ended up um, getting a phone call. And at the time, I was answering the phone. So I get the phone call. And I remember it was this lady, and she called me hysterically, right? And I remember her calling me, and she's like, I need somebody to come out to my garage door right now. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? You guys were out here yesterday, and I need somebody to come out here right now. And I'm like, what? She's like, I got to take my kids to school right now, and I can't get my car out. I'm like, whoa. And all I wanted to do, really, is I wanted to, like, tell her, say, hello, ma'am. You have called the non-emergency hotline. If you have emergency, please hang up and call 911. That's what I wanted to do, right? But I didn't. I stayed cool. I stayed cool. I was like, I was like, oh, okay, what's going on? Door won't open. I'm like, oh, all right. Well, I told her, I said, you know, she knows the situation. I said, I will be out shortly, right? Got mosquitoes. So I go out there and the door has failed. Well, let me, let, me step, let me step back. Let me step back. So that's what it was. Oh, so I did. I ended up going out there. I fixed it a second time. 
I go out there, I get a phone call the third time, right? And the, now the second time that I already go out there, she won't answer the door. She's literally like, you know how like when you open up a door at some houses, like it goes up to a wall? She was literally standing behind the door. Behind the door. She's standing behind the door. And I can see her in the crack, you know, when the door is open. I'm like, what is this lady standing behind the door? Is she going to come out like, you know, and just like stab me? And her daughter comes up. And her daughter's pretty nice, you know, but seems a little off guard, you know, like mom's mad. I don't know who you are, but I have to take care of the situation. So her daughter walks out with me and I'm like, I'm compelled, right? I'm just like, so what's going on here? I said, uh, I said, why isn't your mom coming out? And she's like, oh, she goes, my mom's a little upset. I'm thinking this lady's that upset that I dropped what I'm doing. And I came out here. It took me, you know, 45 minutes, which I'm sure is a long wait for some people. And she can't come out herself. I don't, I'm not digging this. I fix it again. I fix it again. Now, I end up getting another phone call a day or two later. It fails again. And I'm like, I'm over this thing, man. I'm done. I'm feeling like a complete loser. I don't know what, I, got, I guess I don't know what I'm doing. Now I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I can't deal with this customer so far away so far away remember that distance i always tell you guys and i cannot deal with the harshness of the no respect you know now on the third time if i did go out there the third time i probably would have solved i, I might have had to come up with a different solution i might have said I, I gotta you know i gotta put a, a you know regular torsion system up here whatever right but i was trying to save the customer money but you know what saving the customer money is not the key Providing a good service, a good value, is what we need to do. This is what we need to focus on. That's what I'm trying to get at. So I end up going out there. I didn't go out there the third time. She's calling. She's calling. I won't even answer. I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done. Call somebody else, right? But the thing is, as she knows, she wants somebody's hiney to chew out. Big time. Big time chew out. She wants to chew my hiney out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. There's no respect here. I can't, I can't do it. So I'm losing money, and there's no respect. I'm not dealing with this. You know what I mean? If you're the nicest person, I will just bend over. I'll probably be out there 10 times. I am sorry. I will take care of you. <sighs> so anyways, I told myself, I'm done. I'm not doing this. I can't, I can't provide a good service with this product. It's an inferior product. It's an inferior product. Menard sells it because it's easier for them to ship because people can pack them in their little trucks and they can haul them down the road. That's the reason they do it. Or it's more, it's cheaper for them to ship it in the semis. They can pack more of them, whatever. Anyways, the third time, finally, her husband calls. Husband, I figured it was somebody from a different number, but I didn't know for sure. I answered it. I literally talked to the husband. I said, I'm really sorry about your service. I said, I apologize up and down. I said, I don't know what to tell you. And he goes, you know, he basically kind of told me, like, kind of real secret, you know, like, my wife is crazy. I'm like, I believe you. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with her. <laughs> She's going crazy on me. And I'm done. And that was the end of the story. That was it. That was, It was done. It was done. But it was like they were looking to chew somebody out, man. And I just told myself, I'm done. So anyways, going back. Getting back to the story a little bit. So my lead guy goes out. It's late tonight. We already go to this customer once. Another technician. Right from the get-go. Should have just said, should have walked away. Should have just walked. I'm done. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. You know, like I look at it, if it's family or friends and, and, and you know the situation, you know, it ain't like their primary vehicle that if it breaks or they got an emergency or got to go to the hospital or grandma's in there not doing so good, eh, maybe, you know what I mean? But you can't do it, guys. I'm telling you, you can't do it. So he ended up doing a repair on it, and now we're on the hook. We're on the hook, baby. We're on the hook. Mm. So we touched it. Dang, we touched it. I hate when we touch it. So we touched it. It failed again. Don't know quite the whole story, but it failed again. That same technician that went originally went back. Free. Zero charge. Because we tried to provide a good service. So now it failed again. And what happens in that coupler, it's a very common problem. You don't know what you're getting into. So it goes in that coupler put a screw in it well he didn't either hit it or he broke it one of the two and it pushed the shaft out well maybe didn't notice it right then and there 
the shaft worked out of that center coupler. I wish I had one to show you. It's just a cheap coupler. It shouldn't even be there. It should be a solid shaft. It fails. My lead guy's like, look, you know, this ain't just some average Joe customer that just called today and I'll push him off. He takes it upon himself, takes it upon himself like a great leader. Good dude, man. Good dude. Goes out there. The only bad part is, and seeing I, I figure this is what's happening, is he, he fixes it again, but he makes it very clear to the customer, we are not coming back out here for free to do this again. But here's the thing, because it's Friday, it's Friday, hmm, and it's Friday. <laughs> I just think about this stuff and I go, I go, it all starts back at the beginning. You know what I mean? I, I, I truly believe it's like body work on a car, right? You know, I remember doing body work on a car and it was always just like, oh, I don't, I just want to paint this thing. And it's like, if you don't do the preparation, it'll turn out like crap. It always does. You know what I mean? But if you don't smooth it out, you know, if you don't do everything step by step and right from the get go, or just like you look at a car to repair it and you just, you might as well just walk away. You're like, I'm not, I'm not touching that. It's got too much rust. It's got too much collision repair. I'm not doing it. Just walk away. And it sucks. It's hard to do because you, you like, you want to help the person, but if they don't understand, they're probably not going to understand. And it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you. And unfortunately, it's like I was telling the lead guy, I said, look, I said, look, man, look, I said, the problem is, is right now his, his, the, the first service tech that went to this ordeal, his van right now went in for service, get new tires put on, right? It's also supposedly got a little bit of oil leak going on, right? Well, that's wear and tear. Every time that vehicle's going somewhere right now, and I told him, I said, now think about it. I said, you know, and I try to ingrain this because I try to ingrain this because people don't understand because these, these, these guys and girls, sometimes they, you know, they're not understanding that the fact is that, you know, now, now times that by 10. Now you go take that vehicle home for the weekend and start repairing it. I've done that before. I've done that. It sucks. I've done brakes. I've done tires. I've done, I've done a lot. I've done painting the vehicles at home. I've done it. I've done it. It's not fun. <sighs> so what I'm getting at is that if you see something, if you see something, you probably should just walk away and say, I'm sorry, really nicely to the customer. That's what I'm trying to get at. Do not deal with that easy torque system. It's junk. Just walk away. Just tell them, say, look, you know, I remember years ago, did I tell you guys about this? Let me see. What, let me see. Let me see where I'm at for time here. Uh, we're about 13, about 13 minutes. I'll give you a little peek, a little peek, peek. So years ago, I had, I called a, I called a service company for my fridge. I had a fridge. I don't know what's wrong with it. I know it's making noise. It's been a great fridge. It's been a great fridge. I know it's starting to make noise and then finally kapoof, it goes out, right? And I'm thinking, but it's still a great fridge. There's nothing wrong. It's still the door, the lights, everything work. It's a great fridge. Who deals with old timers like that? There's nothing wrong with it. Just fix it. You know what I mean? We kind of don't live in that world, unfortunately, anymore. It's just, my dad explained it to me one time. I think it was a great analogy. We're up hunting. Pulls out a lighter. He says, this is the world we live in. Lights up the lighter. I'm like, dad, it's a lighter. What do you, what's, what's the deal here? It's a Bic lighter, right? He says, basically men don't carry around Zippos anymore. Everybody carries around Bic lighters, right? And once the Bic lighter runs out of fuel, what do you do with it? Do you repair it? Do you fix it? No. You throw it in the garbage and you go get a new one. Good analogy. So I end up, um, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. So I'm dealing with this fridge. And I call this service company, a really reputable place in my town. And the first thing they do, it's like they're trained. They're like trained ninjas, right? They're like trained ninjas to go, we're not going to waste our time. And the guy goes, is it our product? And I'm like, No. I'm like, I bought this thing at Best Buy, man. I'm like, this ain't your product? No. And he's like, well, I'm sorry, then we don't service it. And it's like, huh? And I remember at the time, I was mad. I was like, I was thinking to myself, like, are you serious? I was like, what kind of service is this? <laughs> well, guess what? I ended up just buying a new one because I didn't want to do the runaround on it. But what I'm getting at is looking back now, I get it. I get it 100%. It's not their product. Not saying they should always do that, but it's like it's like people make you know they make fun of me about those extreme those extreme garage door openers. 
<laughs> I think they call them extreme wear. I think they went out of business. They call it something else, like Master X or something, or Mastercraft. I don't know. It was, you, you know, if you're an installer, you know what you're dealing with. You know what you're dealing with. Not very good. So I'm just trying to relay a point across that it's better to nip it in the butt now when it's a small flame, small little flame. It's better to nip it in the butt now than it is to let it grow. Because like this little situation, this is a loss of money. It was a loss of revenue. To top it off, the guy, the lead guy, literally went, I'll take care of this. He also, somebody forgot to shut the gate. I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was him. He, he, he admitted to it or whatever. But if you think about this in a nutshell, this could have led to more. This could have led to the gate being open. We have a lot of uh, expensive trailers and scissor lifts in this gated area. If I wanted to caught it tonight, which I mentioned to him, hey, I think the gate got left open because I can see it on the cameras. He said, oh, I'll, I'll swing back by, but whatever. He says, I thought I closed. But I'm, what I'm getting at is that he was probably so distracted because he had to go out and take care of the service call. He really didn't have the motivation to want to you know, change everything out. He might not even had it tonight that he overlooked the whole scenario and he just got them back up and running and just basically explained to them, look, if this happens again, good luck, Chuck, right? But that doesn't mean nothing. That doesn't mean nothing. Because you say something does not mean nothing unless you get it in writing. And so unfortunately, this whole situation could escalate. Um, I know for my lead guy, this has escalated before. Um, it's escalated before in a top section, I believe it was something that failed and the guy was very upset. So he finally went out there and did it for free and it was months later. So I'm just trying to get the point across that things can manifest, things can manifest. And so it's, it's, I always try to explain it. It's, you're not looking out today. You're looking out for tomorrow. You're not, you know, don't think about you. Think about the next guy. Anyways, I hope that's helpful for you guys. I hope you guys have a great weekend. I think I'm going to upload this right now. No editing, no nothing, just raw, no makeup, no prompts. Anyways, take care, guys. Like, subscribe if you would. Comment below. Think I'm crazy. <laughs> See you guys. Have a good weekend.